never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. preaching about being a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord this morning, talking about the Ark of the Covenant that stayed there. When that Ark of the Covenant stayed there at Obadiah's house for three months, he couldn't help but to follow it when it left. I believe he said 62 of his descendants ended up working and laboring in the work of the Lord. Something about the presence of the Lord made mention this morning about the importance of the presence of the Lord. And I thought of this psalm in Psalm 114. So when Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language, Judah was a sanctuary and Israel is dominion. The sea saw it and fled. Jordan was driven back. The mountains skipped like rams and the little hills like lambs. What ailed thee, O thou sea, that thou fleddest, thou Jordan, that thou was driven back? Ye mountain, that ye skipped like rams, and ye little hills like lambs. Tremble thou earth at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, which turned a rock into a standing water, the flint into fountains of waters. Tremble thou earth at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. There's nothing like being in His presence. He is the way maker. He is the miracle worker. He is the great God Jehovah. Let's just stand to our feet once again tonight. Invite Him just to have His way. Whatever you came here with, whatever you need rolled back, whatever flint there may be, whatever rock, hard place there may be, God can turn it around in this service tonight. If you believe that, just call upon Him and ask Him to have His way in your life in this service tonight. Father, we're thankful that You are working in our midst. Almighty God, that You're faithful 
as promised. I'm thankful that I've come out of Egypt. I'm on my way to glory. Almighty God, but in this journey there's battles, there's oppositions, there's turmoils, there's struggles. But oh, if we could just get in your presence where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Mighty God, as we slip into your presence tonight, troubles will vanish. As we slip into your presence tonight, healing will overtake our bodies. As we slip into your presence tonight, God, every situation is turned, every hard place removed. We know that you're faithful as promised tonight. We just welcome your presence in the house of the Lord. We just welcome what you want to do in our midst, oh God. We believe you to touch hearts, lives. Oh, Lamb of God, we can leave here forever changed by the hand of the Lord. Mighty God, put in a guard on our lives. Standing fast in the faith and the liberty in which you've called us out of darkness into this marvelous light. We bask in the presence of the King of kings and the Lord of lords, honoring your presence tonight. We pray, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, have your way in this place this evening. Oh, we're going to praise you and thank you and glorify you for it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You may be seated. It is so good to see you tonight in the house of the Lord. We've had a wonderful camp meeting so far this year, just a few services left. And we're just so grateful to the Lord of how He showed up and how He's moved. And just, a, just a humbling presence of the Lord uh, last night. I don't even think Brother Elijah got through with his message. He said it wasn't going to be a very long one anyway. But the Spirit of God just came down and just began to minister to, to hearts. And I don't know if he'll finish that message tonight or tomorrow night or when. Or if he'll ever get to finish it, but the Lord finished it last night. The Holy Ghost just came down and, and met with us in a great way. I love when the Lord moves in our midst. And just so thankful for, for these men that's been pouring out their hearts. These ladies have been pouring out their hearts in worship as well. It's been a wonderful week so far. I'm looking forward to what God has in store for us over these next few services. Good to see you here. Uh, many of you have been faithful this week, and we thank you for that. And uh, those that's been visiting, we thank you that's gotten here when you can, and we appreciate that. We appreciate you coming and uh, being. We know it's busy times. We know it's trying times, and you've taken time out of uh, your schedule to come and to be in the house of the Lord. And uh, we, we appreciate your fellowship. We appreciate you supporting us. But we still, we, most of all, we appreciate that there's a people that still wants to be where the presence of the Lord is moving. A people that says, I want to be in the house of God. When everything is telling us, don't go to church. Everything is telling us, don't praise God. Everything is telling us, just, just stay back, sit back. Uh, we say, no, I want to get up. I want to get dressed. I, I want to comb my hair, and I want to get to the house of God. I want to, to see what God wants me to do. I don't want to just throw on my pajamas and grab a cup of coffee and sit in front of a TV or a computer screen. I, I want to be in God's house. And I'm thankful that I'm able to do that, that I'm able to come into the house of the Lord without fear, without regret, and be able to worship Him. What a mighty God we serve. I'm just grateful to Him for all that He's doing and uh, just looking forward to what He has in store for us tonight in this service. Tomorrow night's service is going to be uh, just a little bit different. We're closing out camp meeting a little different this year. Uh, Sister Rhonda, our music minister, started a, uh, back in the summer, a quarter, she started a singspiration. And we had a, a time of singing where we featured different singers within our church for that. And I wanted to incorporate that in camp meeting for this quarter. So that's how we're going to close out camp meeting tomorrow night. Uh, the Thorntons are going to be singing a few songs. Uh, Brother Elijah is going to preach a condensed version of a message. Uh, if, if the Lord leads him, the leads condense. For us around here, condense anywhere between 20 and 30 minutes because I preach about an hour or so. So anything less than 45 minutes is condensed. So Brother Elijah will be preaching a, a condensed message. And then the Whitleys are going to, to come. And uh, his Brother Whitley's other two daughters will be with him tomorrow, coming in tomorrow afternoon. And so they'll be singing a few songs for us. And then Pastor Brian's going to close us out tomorrow night. So, And uh, Brother Jake's going to get his licks in there between songs, too, I'm sure, with some preaching. So we're just so, we're so glad to have this ministry. I, I'm, I'm thankful for the way that it worked out. You know, if standing up here being perfectly honest, this is not the ministry team that I booked at, uh, for camp meeting at the beginning, at the end of last year. But this is the way.
way it worked out, and uh, I'm thankful for that. And I, I appreciate how the Lord just brings people to our hearts and how uh, just things corresponded and worked out. And uh, me and Brother Paul was talking tonight before service. He said, I don't know about you, but this has been my favorite camp meeting so far. I said, they get gooder and gooder every year. And I'm just thankful for that because God has a people that uh, these men don't know what I've been preaching over the last few months. I, I doubt very seriously they got time to listen to me preach on Spreaker. Uh, they pastoring and doing their thing and, and uh, taking care of some stuff. And a lot of our Wednesday night messages I haven't even put on Spreaker, but they've been preaching right along the same lines of what God has been doing over these past few months. And I love it when God is in the mix of it. He's working it all together. I'm all about this tying into this. I don't want to have it over here this week and over here this week and over there that next week. I love it when, when everything is done and pulled together that God is orchestrating a plan. And God gives us a theme every year. I don't know why God has done that since I've been here as pastor, but he's given us a theme every year. Some churches have vision statements, and, and they have that, and they set that out, and that's their vision from now until the time they die. Our cha ours changes annually. God just deals with us, and this year, the last two years, has been the year of restoration. And we've seen the hand of God bringing restoration in so many different areas. And, and this year, we've just put a focus on restoring the message of Pentecost. We're still Pentecostal. We still believe in full Pentecost and all that it is and all that it entails. So we've been endeavoring to, to bring a restoration to that message uh, this year. And that's what God is doing. Restoration continues. And he's been doing that in these meetings. And I'm thankful for that. We want to give you an opportunity tonight to support our camp meeting financially. Uh, it's, it's not cheap to put on camp meeting, but God always provides. And so we just want to uh, give you an opportunity to help us offset the expense of camp meeting if you would like to do that. So if we can get our ushers to come, if I can get Gracie and Ashley to help me tonight. I want to give you uh, an opportunity to give. Is giving unto the Lord. You say, Pastor, I don't have any money. That's all right. That's all right. God understands. And uh, we're, we're not here. Too, too many people say, I don't want to go to church. They're all about money. No, we just want you to be here. We want you to enjoy the presence of the Lord. And if you're able to support, support. If you can't, we're going to pray that God will bless you, that you can give it another time, because it's more blessed to give than to receive. I guarantee you that. And you can't outgive God. So we want you just to give out of a heart of love. If you say, I don't have anything to give, but I am a Christian, and I love God, we'll pray for these men and women of God, that God will make provision for them in some other way. Father, we're just so grateful to you tonight for the privilege that we've had so far to enjoy these services. Oh, it's been a mighty, mighty move that you've done in hearts and lives. And, and I just believe that you've got some more in store for us tonight, God. I've got an expectancy of what you're going to do in this place. And I want to be right in the middle of it, God. And I know each one here with that heart of a Christian has that desire to be right in the middle of it. And I just pray tonight as we support this meeting with our financials, with our, our, our stewardship, God, that you will take this and you will supply the provision for each part of this camp meeting. And we know that you'll grant it and you'll bless the gift and the giver alike. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you give tonight. glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. I'm just so thankful for what God has been doing this week, for how God's been moving and working. And uh, I just, it's been, it was, last night was just so surreal. Those of you home fries, y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? Just where the presence of God just sat down and ministered to us in such a mighty way. I, uh, I say this often, uh, and 
Sometimes I don't, sometimes I do. But there's just some services that you just don't forget. You know what I mean? Where you just get lost in the presence of God and sometimes you just find yourself so humbled by the presence of the Lord. And last night during altar call, I just felt such a sweet presence of the Lord sit down in this place. And uh, church, if we need anything in this day and hour, we need the presence of God to sit down in our church services. We need the presence of God to come down and minister to us because I don't believe it's going to be very long. We're going to check out of here. And if we ain't ready, we better get ready. Amen. Praise God. Worship with us tonight. mountain can't be moved they say these chains will never break but they don't know you like we do there is power in your name we've heard that there tide will never change they haven't seen what you can do there is power in your name so much power in your Trust. 
Move the unmovable, break the unbreakable. God, we believe. God, we believe for it. From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. God, we believe. God, we believe. I believe you're still a miracle worker. How about you? Amen. Praise God. I just love him tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus.
is filled with joy. This world can't take away the person I once was. It's not who I am today. And I'm living now for Him. Oh, cause He gave His life for me. He made a way. The price was paid on the cross of Calvary. Now I've been chased. Oh, the pain's no longer there. The guilt is gone. All my burdens he now bears. testify to that tonight. I've been changed. If any man's in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things passed away. All things have become new. Thankful for the change that he made in my life. Praise the Lord. will not you just get in here with Brother Elijah tonight. Let the Lord speak to your heart this evening, whatever he has for us. Come on, brother. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank God for that change. <laughs> Thank God for that change He's made in my life. Praise God. I hope you've come expecting God to minister to you. Because if you didn't come with that expectation, man, you came with the wrong attitude. Hallelujah. We need God to move in this hour, and I want God to help us. I tell you, I, I'm, I'm so thankful for the camp meeting. I appreciate this opportunity to be a part, and God's just done a work in my life and God's been helping me God's been growing me I appreciate every service that God has allowed us to have every morning service every evening service God has just done the work that only he can do it's not man's ability it's all by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ and the spirit of God and when God moves in our services we ought to grab a hold of that we ought to be praying for God to move right before our very own eyes in these days in which we're living in we don't need another same old same old routine like we preached last night I hope you come for an encounter tonight. I hope you come for an encounter with God. I'm telling you, God helped us in this place last night. And uh, I could preach the rest of that message, but that's not where I feel led to go tonight. If you have your Bibles, turn me to the book of St. Mark's Gospel, chapter number 8. Amen. Let's get our minds on the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. St. Mark's Gospel, chapter number 8, verse number 34. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. St. Mark's Gospel, chapter number 8, begin reading in verse number 34. The Word of God reads, it says, And when he called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel's the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Listen now. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Let's read verse 38 again. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory 
of his father with the holy angels. I did not know who was going to be here, and I I did not know what Brother Brown was going to preach on this morning, and it uh, it kind of splashed on just a little bit of what I'm going to bring in with this message tonight, and I was just sitting over there uh, thinking how funny it was that he got over there in Obed-Edom and David in that area in that time, and we're going to get into that in just a minute. So I believe God has this message planned for somebody here tonight. I can't see ahead in time and, and see the faces that's going to show up, but God knows and God ordains these services and God knew who was going to be here tonight. If the Lord will help me, I want to preach a message entitled, I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed. Would you stretch your hands toward heaven and ask the Lord to help us in this service tonight? Precious Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy and your grace. Oh, dear God, help us tonight, Jesus. Lord, I'm praying for that fresh touch tonight. I'm praying for that fresh touch tonight, God. I'm praying for that fresh anointing tonight, God. Lord, I pray that you would anoint your word tonight. I pray that you would anoint the remainder of this service, God. Thankful, almighty God, for this time that you have given unto us. The privilege to be in your house and the privilege to be in your sanctuary, God. You are worthy of all glory and honor and praise. God, use me. Get Elijah out of the way. Get self out of the way. God, that you can speak to our hearts and speak to our souls and talk to every man man and every woman, boy and girl here tonight. Let the word of God go forth and let it minister to every soul that's here in this service today. The Lord will be careful to give you the glory and all the praise and all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name we do pray. And the church says amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for standing for the reading of God's word. I do want to take the time and say I thank God for all that's been done this week. Thank God for uh, the giving. I pray God will bless it back to you. I appreciate the fellowship and all that Brother Jamie and, and Sister Amy's done for us this week. And not only has he fed us good and we fellowship good, he gave me the better accommodations. I got my own bed. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm thankful for that. Hallelujah. I want to preach tonight if the Lord will help me on. I am not ashamed. It is at this point in time in the scriptures where Jesus tells the people exactly what it takes to come after Christ. Hallelujah. For those that want to follow him and for those that want to become his disciples, he showed them what it was going to cost. Hallelujah. Jesus gathered the people along with his disciples and said, any man that's going to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. There's a lot of people in this day and time, they want to skip a couple of them steps. I'm going to preach the gospel tonight, so bear with me. Amen. I said there's a lot of people trying to skip a couple of them steps. Oh, they want to just an easy lay me up a, a gospel, but Jesus let them know if you're going to follow me and if you're going to come after me, you're going to have to deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. A lot of people don't like to bury a cross or carry a cross because a cross comes with convictions and, and a cross comes with a standard. But I'm here to tell you today, if you're going to fully follow the Lord, Jesus Christ. There's a self-surrender that you're going to have to do. There's a cross that you're going to have to take up. And there's an order and there's a step that you're going to have to follow. You must surrender yourself and die to the flesh and die to the old man. And then you can follow God. Is anybody following me here tonight? I said you got to surrender yourself totally to the Lord. And then a death is going to have to take place to the flesh and to the world. Amen. The man that's willing to lose out to the world and is willing to let go for the gospel's sake and for Jesus shall save his life. Hallelujah. For what is it going to profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? I believe Jesus was talking to a people who just might have been trying to follow him and still hold on to the world. I believe there was a people trying to follow Christ but still have a life in the world. 
My friend, you can't follow Jesus and still walk in the course of this world. I said you can't follow Jesus and have one foot in the world and try to have one foot in the church, one foot in the path of the wide and broad, and one foot in the straight and the narrow. It does not work that way. You have to die out to this world in order to find life in the Son of God. Nobody wants to die today, but in order to have life, there's got to be a death. (laughs) Oh, pray for this preacher tonight. I'm preaching a gospel that ain't popular today. Hallelujah. But I'm preaching, hallelujah, to somebody tonight. You're thinking you're going to hold hands with Christ and hold hands with the world. It don't work that way, my friend. Hallelujah. I said you can't try to dig in the gospel and still try to find treasures in the world. Help me tonight, Holy Ghost. I got a message to preach to somebody. Then Jesus boldly proclaimed, whosoever shall be a ashamed of me and of my words in this sinful and adulterous generation of him also shall the son of man be ashamed and listen to me church in other words if you're ashamed to be identified with Christ then Christ is going to be ashamed of you if you're ashamed for the world to see you as a follower of Jesus and if you're ashamed for the world to see you walking and living in his word then Jesus is going to be ashamed of you But look at me tonight. You're looking at somebody that's not ashamed for the world to see me dedicated to God. Hallelujah. You're looking at a heart. My God, that does not care what the world sees me as. Hallelujah. That old song says you're going to call me a lot of things, but one day you're going to call me gone. Hallelujah. I said one day you're going to call me gone. Praise God. You're looking at a soul. I wasn't ashamed when I stood for God, living and walking in the in the hallways of a public school. I sat in classrooms and I was humming hymns. Come on now. I carried a Bible in my backpack and there was days in the gymnasium I sat in the bleachers and I pulled it out or if I was fasting I'd sit at that lunchroom table and I'd pull out the Bible I said I'm not ashamed to let this world know who I love who I serve and I'm dedicated in the ways of God help me Holy Ghost you're going to help me tonight somebody We're living in an hour where I feel like people are ashamed of holiness anymore. You gonna help me preach? I said we're living in a generation. I feel like people are too ashamed to to live right or or talk right or or dress right. Come on now, somebody. Help me preach, Holy Ghost. I'm preaching to you the Bible. If you're ashamed to be identified with Christ, then Christ is going to be ashamed of you. I'd hate to know that when Jesus came back, he was too ashamed to recognize me as one of his. Everybody puts Christ as their label, but not everybody has Christ in their heart. Come on now, somebody. I don't know, man, we was doing good, brother, and I done took a long turn. But I'm preaching to you the Bible. I said if you're too ashamed to stand up and let the world know who you identify with, you want to know why Peter fell, warming himself by the fire. He was too ashamed. He was too afraid to let others know that he was one of his. Come on now, somebody. He was too ashamed. Hey, them people over there are holy rollers. Them people over there still believe in holiness. Them people over there still believe in righteousness. Them people over there still believe in truth. Them people over there still believe in convictions. And yes, I do. And I'm not ashamed of it. I said, yes, I do. And I'm not ashamed of it. Matthew chapter 8, verse 38. I looked up a commentary. Jesus sees the world and society in which we live in as an adulterous and sinful generation. 
he identified it back then. How much more today? Come on. How much more today? All those who seek to be popular, come on now, or accepted by their present evil generation rather than follow Christ and his righteous standards will be rejected by Christ at his return. Oh, somebody didn't like that. Hallelujah. I said those who seek to be popular or accepted by their present evil generation rather than follow Christ and his righteous standards will be rejected by Christ at his return. Listen, I didn't seek to fit in when I was walking them school hallways. I could care less. I said I could care less. They had their groups. They had their people. Uh, they had their hierarchy so to speak. Uh, I felt like I was the only one. Uh, I felt like I was the loneliest man. Uh, it was just me and God. Uh, but I was not ashamed uh, to carry my cross uh, and live for Jesus uh, in this hour, uh, in this day. Uh, let there be a church that's not ashamed. Let there be a youth group that's not ashamed. Let there be a bride that's not ashamed. Let them point. Let them laugh. Let them talk about us. I don't care. I'm not ashamed of my Savior. Hallelujah to God. Luke chapter 9. Verse 26, commentary was basically the same scriptures. But the commentary worded it just a little different. It said, to be ashamed of Jesus means to feel shame or embarrassment before the world. When we are identified publicly with him or his values and his message. To be ashamed of Christ Jesus and his word by remaining a silent discipline uh, disciple now will cause him to be ashamed of us when he returns in his awesome glory. Are you hearing me tonight, my friend? You can try to cower in the shadows all you want to. I don't want them to know exactly how I live. I don't want them to know exactly what I profess. I don't want them to know exactly who I proclaim. I don't want them to know I believe in the Holy Ghost. I don't want them to know and believe in that I believe in holiness and God's standard and the fullness of God's word. When God comes back, you're going to have a wide awakening. He said, if you'll confess me before me and I'll confess you before my angels but if you deny me before me and I'll deny you that's not Elijah saying that's the word I said that's biblical. Go back. I'm not ashamed to let my light shine before men. Do men light a candle and hide it under a bushel? No. But they put it on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. I'm not ashamed to be a bright and shining beacon for the Lord. I'm not ashamed to be a young man that's in love with God. Just bear with me for a second. I preached at a church. I, didn't, I wasn't even looking around, but I could feel something wasn't right. I preached, and then by the time I looked up, I knew what was going on. There were some people in the back, a, a, young, a young man, I'll say, and a young lady sitting all the way in the front but they were completely laughing, texting back and forth in the middle of the service. I could tell what he was doing. I could tell he was laughing at the message. You're not going to help me tonight, are you? I said, I could feel, Brother Jamie, something wasn't right. 
And when I looked up, I seen it. They can push the message of the gospel away if they want to. I said, but I preached with everything that was in me. I sweated then like I'm sweating now. I preached it with all my heart. And I preached it with all my soul. And if God brings me back to that building and that congregation, I'll preach his message again. I'm not ashamed. They can laugh at me. They can talk about me. But I'll stand with Jesus and let the world go by. I love God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I said, I love the Lord. I love His Word. And I'm not ashamed of it. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You can laugh at this preacher all you want to. Hallelujah. But I'm here to tell you tonight, if you're ashamed to be publicly noticed and publicly identified, my God, if you're ashamed for people to drive by and say that's a holy church, something's wrong with your walk with God. Come on now, somebody. I'm not ashamed to carry my cross. <laughs> Brother, Brother Brian, I carried this, not this exact Bible, but I carried a Bible with me every day. <laughs> and when I sat in them bleachers and I pulled it out, people would come by and look at me. I didn't care. I said, I didn't care. <laughs> I didn't care what they thought. I didn't care what they were saying to one another. Hallelujah to God. I don't know if Jake was there that morning or not, but Jake knows who I'm talking about. We, when my freshman year, me playing basketball, my freshman year, we had the, a star basically, so to speak. Hallelujah. He knows who I'm talking about, but he went on to play college ball at UCF. And I'm talking about the dude was huge, but didn't have to hardly even jump, man. And he was breaking backboards. Hallelujah to God. And I thought it was just, I thought it was just awesome to play on the same team and we had a Bible class together but I'm telling you I did my best to be a bright and light on the court off the court hallelujah I done everything with it I didn't care many times they'd ask me to pray before we even went out and stepped on the court to play and I'd be holding hands and we'd huddle up together I had one boy tell me he said man I was feeling something while you were praying I didn't care I said I didn't care brother Paul I wasn't ashamed, but we had a Bible class. And then halfway through the year, we started having a devotion. I think it might have been every Thursday morning or maybe once a month. I, I can't exactly remember, but it was his turn to give a devotion before school that morning. And he was up there talking. I don't know if Jake was there or not, but he got over there and was talking. And he pointed his finger at me, Brother Brian. And he said, you remind me of a woman in my church. He was a PK. He said, you remind me of a lady in my church. He said, she's always at the front. She's always shouting. She's always saying hallelujah. She's always talking about Jesus. She's always singing, come on now, somebody. He said, and I called her a Jesus freak. So you know what he was calling me? He was calling me a Jesus freak. But church, he looked down and he looked back up at me and I could see tears forming in his eyes. He said, I want to be just like you. I'm not ashamed of the world to see me as a child of God. I said, I'm not ashamed. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah. I believe that song says, I'm one of them. I'm one of them. I'm not ashamed to tell you I'm one of them. You can tell by the way I walk. You can tell by the way I talk. My God, you can tell by the way that I wear my armor. Come on, somebody. I'm one of them Holy Ghost believers. I know about the gifts and signs. You've come too late to tell me, hallelujah, that it's not right or it's not real or it's not famous. I'm here to tell you today, I'm not ashamed to be one of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not ashamed to tell you I'm one of them. I'm not ashamed of Jesus. 
come on now. The people that will let the world in. I said the churches that will let the world in. They must be ashamed. Oh my God, help me tonight, Holy Ghost. I said the people that will let the world in their life, they must be ashamed to let the world see them and see what God has done for them. I want the world to know. I said I'm not trying to hide it. I want the world to know this is a church that's not ashamed of God. Hallelujah. Paul said in the book of Romans chapter 1, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Well, glory, hallelujah. Then later in 2 Timothy chapter 1, Paul charged young Timothy, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. If you will confess Christ before men, he'll confess you before the angels. Let me tell you tonight, I choose Jesus. If you want the world, you can have it, but I'd rather have Jesus. I'd rather have the spirit and the power of the Holy Ghost. This thing right here, I'm not ashamed to live it. There might be few and far in between, but you're looking at somebody that's not ashamed to live it. I won't water it down to get more open bookings. Oh my God, let me preach on Elijah tonight. I said I won't compromise that gospel just to go to so and so church and preach. If they don't want the truth, then they don't want me to preach. I'm not ashamed. My God, I'm not ashamed. I said I'm not ashamed. If you've been living a life that's ashamed to to proudly or boldly profess then you need to find an altar. I said you need to find an altar. If you're ashamed to tell somebody of the testimony of the Lord, if you're ashamed of the gospel of Christ, you need to find yourself in these altars and pray back through to let God do a work in your life again. I'm telling you, I want the world to know. I tell you why I'm not ashamed. Because it was him that pulled me out of that horrible pit. It was him that pulled me out of the miry clay. It was him that set my feet on a rock. It was the Lord that put a song in my heart. He put a song in my heart and I'm going to sing it. He put a praise on my lips and I'm going to praise him. You're trying to get me to be, no, I'm not trying to get you to worship like Elijah. But if you're ashamed to publicly worship God, I'm afraid for your soul, my friend. He said, if you're going to be ashamed of my work and ashamed of my words and ashamed of me, I'm going to be ashamed of you. The Bible records when David was bringing the ark of God back to Jerusalem. And his brother was preaching on that this morning. I didn't get this from him. The Lord already put this on my heart. But I'm going to obey God, all right? When he was bringing the ark of God back to Jerusalem, back to the tabernacle that he had pitched for it, the Bible mentions that during the process of returning the ark into the city. King David danced. King David danced before the Lord with all his might. King David had removed his royal kingly attire and humbly adorned himself with the linen ephod an act of worship come on somebody I said an act of worship to God it was said in the scriptures that as the ark of God came into the city King David was seen leaping and dancing before the Lord the Bible mentions that the daughter of Saul seen David leaping and dancing before the Lord and despised him in his heart. She came out to meet him and said how glorious was the king of Israel today. You know what she was saying? She came out to David and said, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. 
Come on now, somebody. She said to that king, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. A king's not supposed to act in that manner. A king's not supposed to wear the attire that slaves wore or be adorned as a poor man. She said, you ought to be ashamed of yourself for acting in that kind of manner. But I can almost hear David reply and say, this is a day, a day of glad tidings. This day there is a cause for me to dance before the Lord. For too long the nation of Israel has been without the presence of God. Too long our people has been missing God. Too long the ark has been missing. Too long the ark has been gone. And we got it back. Shouldn't I worship? Shouldn't I praise? Shouldn't I dance? Shouldn't I leave? Woo! They ought to be ashamed of themselves. They're grazing that that volume meter a little too high. Come on now, somebody. They'll sit back. They ought to be ashamed of themselves. Dancing like that in front of everybody at the front of the church. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not saying you got to get up and dance. But let me tell you about this preacher here right now. I said if the Holy Ghost gets on me good enough, I just might dance in the Spirit. I said if the Holy Ghost gets on me good enough, I just might take me a lap across this building. You should have been there when the Lord saved me. You should have been there when he filled me. You should have been there when he done the work in my life I'm not ashamed to come up here and dance before my God and shout in the presence of the Lord hallelujah to God my God I feel the Holy Ghost in this house if there's one thing you're going to learn about Elijah I don't care where I'm at I don't care what church I'm in when I begin to feel the presence of God and I know the Lord's in the house, I'm not ashamed to lift up my hands if I'm the only one. I'm not ashamed to praise God if it's just me. Hallelujah. Well, glory. Elijah, this preacher right here, I'm going to preach on me for a minute, all right? He's just like King David in this regards. Let the world mock if they want to mock. Come on now. Let them laugh if they want to laugh, preacher. Brother Chris, let them scorn if they want to (laughs) scorn. I could just imagine me driving down the interstate in between preaching meetings and I'm over there with my hands up in the air, tears falling down my face, just me and the good Lord in that car of mine. I could just about imagine what people are passing by thinking and saying about this man. Let them think crazy about me if they want to think crazy about me. Man, if they could feel what I feel and know what I know and taste and see what I've experienced in God they'd be right beside me praising God hallelujah listen to me my friend I'm just getting warmed up for glory Woo. I said I'm just getting warmed up for glory This is just practice down here. Come on now. I'm just getting warmed up in my worship down here. Listen to me, my friend. You don't think the saints that have gone on before that maybe died from sickness or died from health problems and they woke up to a glorified, come on now, somebody, and they woke up to a brand new body in the image of God. You don't think they ran the streets of gold. You don't think they fell down before the throne and worship. You don't think those, my God, that died in faith. You don't think when they woke up 
if they had a missing arm they had two come on now if they had a missing leg they had a brand new leg if they was blind in both eyes they could see the glorious city that was prepared by the hands of God you don't think they're worshiping you're not going to convince this preacher that it's quiet over in glory So you'll have to excuse this preacher if he gets a little bit excited down here. You'll have to excuse this preacher because you just have to know I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I prayed through over that in high school. Come on now, somebody. I prayed through over that. I've been to places I could feel people talking about me. I didn't care. Come on now. I said, I've been in places I could feel people talking about me, laughing about me. I didn't care, Pastor. I still held on to God. You try to walk and serve God in the shadows, and you'll be in for a wide awakening when Christ comes back. You didn't want to be noticed that you were one of mine. Come on now. Don't be ashamed of your relationship with God. If you're the only one that steps out and comes to an altar, don't be ashamed. If you're the only one in your youth group, come on now. If you're the only one in your youth group, that wants to surrender and commit yourself to God, don't be ashamed. I said, don't let other people drag you away from God just because they're in your clique. Come on now, somebody. You listen to this preacher. I've had to let people go, but I wasn't ashamed. I said, I had to let people go, but I didn't care. I didn't want them jeopardizing my walk with God. Hold on to it if you want to. But if it causes a blemish in your life, come on now. Don't be ashamed to let this world know. Don't be ashamed to be that light. Don't be ashamed to carry your candle. Don't be ashamed to live holy. Don't be ashamed to follow after righteousness. Don't be ashamed to follow after godliness. I know these are foreign words in this day and time, but it's still biblically correct. Don't be ashamed to commit yourself and your ways to God. Hallelujah to God. They said, Paul, you've gone crazy. Much study hath made you mad. No, my friend, the deeper I dug in the word, the more in love I fell. <laughs> the more I fell in love with the author. Woo, I said, the more I dig into this gospel, the more in love I fall with God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. If you're ashamed of God, don't leave this house. I said, if you're ashamed to tell this world who you are in the Lord, don't leave this sanctuary. If you're not one of his to begin with, don't leave this sanctuary. My friend, surrender your life completely into the hands of God and stand in his word and in his law. Don't be ashamed to let people at the school know. Don't be ashamed to let people on the job know. Let me tell you, I wish I was half the man my daddy was. Or my daddy is, I'll tell you that much. I hear him talking to people all the time. I hear him sharing testimonies all the time. I know the work he's done in my, God's done in my daddy's life. He's not here tonight, so I'll just testify. He don't like to share where he's been. He don't like to talk about what he's done. But when he shares his testimony, he got did things he wish he'd never done. Drugs, alcohol, bars. Come on now, somebody. That was who he used to be. But on an Easter Sunday morning, 
God got a hold of his life. And I'm telling you, there's been a change ever since. I said he drug me to the house of God. He raised me in the sanctuary. He wasn't ashamed of it, neither my God. I said my daddy's not ashamed to tell his fellow crewmen on the job what God's doing in his family, what God's done in his life. And I pray that everywhere I go, I'll proudly and proudly profess Jesus. My God, my God, my God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Paul didn't care. Wherever the Spirit of God led him, he never watered it down because of the religion or the denomination or who they worshipped. Wherever the Spirit led him, he carried the same message. I said he carried the same gospel. I'm not ashamed of this word. You can live ashamed of your relationship with God. But the moment that Christ returns, you'll find that Christ is going to be ashamed of you. This Saint Elijah's preaching. This is in the scriptures of the Word of God. I preach this tonight so that men and women that's in this sanctuary today would fall back in love with God. I said, I preach this message that men and women would fall back in love with the Lord not with lip service I said not with lip service not with just their mouth my God but they'll love the Lord with all their heart with all their soul with all their mind with all their strength they'll kneel in these altars and they'll live the rest of their life until Christ returns or God calls you home. You'll live and walk in the light of his gospel and you'll never be ashamed for the world to look upon you. My God, if they rid you off, don't worry about it. Just follow the Lord. I said follow God. Am I preaching all right? God laid this on my heart. I really thought the message I was going to preach last night was going to be for tonight, but God haven't had it switch on me. I showed you men in this Bible who was not ashamed. And I showed you out of the words of Christ himself that if you live ashamed of the Lord, the Lord's going to be ashamed of you. If you won't confess God before men now, he won't confess you before the angels. Think about it, my friend. You stand before the Lord and he tells his people, he's not one of mine. You listen to me tonight. You think everybody that professes the Lord's going to go in? No, my friend. Just imagine with me. It's almost hard to fathom, ain't it? I sat on a church pew. Depart from me. I never knew you. Come on now. I come from a godly lineage. Depart from me. I never knew you. There's going to be people stand before God and God's going to deny them. You hear me tonight? Stand with me across this sanctuary. Every head bowed and eye closed. Nobody looking around. Nobody looking across this sanctuary. My helpers is coming to help me with the music. Who would be the first person that will step out and find them a place around these altars and talk to God and say, Lord, don't, help, don't let me live ashamed. Lord, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed to be a child of the King. I'm not ashamed to live under the flow of Calvary. I'm not ashamed to be identified with Christ. I'm not ashamed to worship. 
I'm not ashamed to serve God. Listen, my friend. You hear what this preacher preached tonight. Who wants and needs to find a place to pray and talk to the good Lord and pray in these altars? Lord, I walk and though I'm in the world, I'm not of the world. And I'm not ashamed to push aside the world. I'm not ashamed to shut off the world. I'm not ashamed to put the world behind me and the cross before me. I'm one of His. I'm one of His. I'm one of His. I don't want Jesus to look at me and deny me before the angels. I want him to look and say, look here, angels. This is one of ours. She's one of ours. He's one of ours. And they lived. And they stood. And they professed. And they did not care. They was not ashamed. They was not ashamed. Hallelujah. Pray, saints, pray. Let the Lord help you tonight. Let the Lord help you tonight. Hallelujah. 